Hey guys, it's Linda from the Meredith Library, and I'm going to take you on another tour of my bookshelf a little bit here and grab some books that I have around the apartment. This time I'm focusing on biographies. So I've lost my hefty tripod here, so I'm just going to be sitting on the floor. And one of the first ones I'm choosing is a dual biography. It's called Cleopatra and Anthony by Diana Preston, and it's really well written, well researched. There's a lot of... Uh, great context here and I like that it focuses on her relationship with Antony rather than Caesar. Um, one of the most fascinating things I found about him and her and their dynamic was that he actually treated her pretty much as an equal. He would take her uh, advice for very important state affairs and treat her like the head of state she was. She was the queen, um, the last queen of Egypt and um, this rubbed a lot of people the wrong way including King Herod as you can imagine and very fascinating so I recommend that one. Dog's a little jealous of the attention, so she's staring here at me longingly with her little toy. My second biography for today is about Anne Boleyn. It's called The Life of Death, The Life and Death of Anne Boleyn by Eric Ives. Here it is. It's very hefty. I know it looks intimidating, but it's super well re well researched. He's an amazing scholar. He was an amazing scholar. I think he passed away some years back. Um, and just everything you would have needed to know about Anne Boleyn and the Tudor court here. Um, her rise and fall and it's amazing so I'm gonna kind of stick with that theme same author Eric Ives but this one's less intimidating this one's about Lady Jane Grey another tutor she was the Queen of Nine Days if you don't if you don't know your history there or don't know don't remember her um, she was Henry Date's niece great niece um, just super fascinating life um, she was eventually executed by Bloody Mary Mary the first Mary Tudor Henry the Eighth's daughter and again, Eric Ives is amazing. The next one is about uh, an author. I don't know if you've heard of James Tiptree uh, Jr. or also known as Alice B. Sheldon, but this is a biography. It's called The Double Life of Alice B. Sheldon, James Tiptree Jr. Uh, by Julie Phillips. And it's another little hefty one, but it goes by super fast. It's well-written, well-researched. You get to know her, her mindset. She's a fascinating woman. Um, she wrote some amazing fiction, science fiction, uh, mainly short stories, but she had a couple novels, but she's mainly known for her short stories. Um, my favorite short story of all time, The Girl Who Was Plugged In, was written by her. Um, so I highly recommend that one. She had a fascinating life. Um, she wrote in the 60s and 70s. I very much recommend that. And reading her writing, if you haven't. So, the next one is... And I'm sorry, it's about the French Revolution again, a little bit, but it's a little different. It's a biography of Marie Antoinette, but it focuses on her fashion. And it's, it's a biography told from the perspective of her fashion sense and how she used that politically and socially. And um, it goes into great detail. Um, you learn every little thing about fashion in the 18th century in France. If you're interested in that, I would be. And other people might fall asleep, but I think it's super interesting and you should read that. The next two are... Um, photo biographies that have lots of photographs but also some biographical information. So this one is about Ava Gardner. It's called Ava. It's by Kendra Bean and Anthony Uzerowski. I hope I didn't uh, mess up his name but uh, I actually know Kendra Bean. She's a friend of mine um, from Live Journal days if anyone remembers Live Journal. But this book is amazing. Uh, my cat is named after Ava Gardner and it's got beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pictures and it's very well written. Um, a lot of love put into this. I'm trying to open it with one hand since I can't find my tripod as I mentioned. Um, here is... Here's Ava and Frank Sinatra, her second husband. Uh, third husband, I'm sorry. Uh, and they had a fascinating life together as well. And look at this back picture, isn't that beautiful? The second one along that theme is Frida Kahlo, her photos. Um, this is amazing, amazing. There's so many amazing photos in this. Um, her father was a photographer. He was a German, uh, immigrant to Mexico. And, uh, she just had that sense of art all her life. And she had many photographer friends, famous photographer friends. Um, here's one by her good friend, Lucien Block. So there's just stunning, stunning photos, um, like all throughout her life, uh, her suffering and her triumphs and her happiness. This is her father. Um, I don't know if anyone else sees it, but I think he looks just like William H. Macy. Um, but there's also biographical information, so that's a good one if you want to pick it up. I also recently read a biography 
on Frida Kahlo that focuses on her time in America. That one's at the library. It's called Frida Kahlo in America, and um, hopefully when we reopen, fingers crossed sometime soon, um, as soon as we can safely, uh, you'll be able to check that one out. This last biography is one of my all-time favorites now. I have a lot to explain here. Okay, so it's about the lives and times of Jesus of Nazareth by Reza Aslan, and it's called Zealot. But um, don't think of that term in the modern context because he's using it in a specifically uh, historical context. This biography focuses on Jesus from a pure historical perspective. So um, it's not anti-religious. He's saying you take everything from the Bible on faith, but he's right here just going on the purest historical sources he can and putting him in the context of the world that, that Jesus grew up in, uh, grew in, and I thought it was fascinating. And it's great supplemental if you're interested in theological history or history in general, Christian history. Um, and it does not, again, it does not um, invalidate any beliefs. Just one more thing I wanted to mention. My friend Kendra Bean has also written a book about Vivian Lee. So check that out.